In this video, I'll discuss polygenic traits. Let's break down the word polygenic. Poly meaning many, and genic referring to genes. A polygenic trait is a trait that is determined through the interaction of the products of more than one gene. For polygenic traits, multiple genes work together to create a phenotype. Usually, with polygenic traits, the combination of many genes leads to a range of phenotype possibilities for that trait. You can see this in common polygenic traits like human skin color, eye color, and height. Polygenic traits can be categorized by how the genes and their products interact with each other. Some polygenic traits result from additive interactions. The products of the two genes layer on top of each other to create a new phenotype. Some polygenic traits result from epistasis, where gene products are often part of an assembly line that produce or destroys a molecule. And some polygenic traits are the result of two or more redundant pathways that have the same product. Let's look at a concrete example from this category of polygenic traits. An example of a polygenic trait that results from an additive interaction between genes is lentil seed color which is a trait determined by two different genes involved in making pigment. The first gene, let's call it gene A, encodes enzyme A, which is able to make tan pigment. The dominant allele of gene A, let's call it big A, encodes the functioning version of this enzyme, and the recessive allele, little a, does not make a functioning version of this enzyme. So, any lentil plant that has the homozygous dominant or heterozygous genotype for this gene will be making tan pigment in its seed coat. A plant that is homozygous recessive for this gene does not have the ability to make that tan pigment for the seed coat. The second gene, let's call it gene B, encodes enzyme B, which is able to make gray pigment. Much like we saw in gene A, Gene B's dominant allele, let's call it big B, encodes a functioning enzyme B, and the recessive allele, let's call it little b, does not encode a functioning enzyme B. So any lentil plants that are homozygous dominant or heterozygous for gene B will be making gray pigment in the seed coat, and any homozygous recessive genotypes for gene B will not make gray pigment in the seed coat. Let's put the genotypes of these two genes together to see how they impact seed coat color. If the plant has one of these genotypes, then it makes both gray and tan pigment, which together makes the seed coat appear brown. These gray and tan pigments are layered on top of each other to create this brown coloring. If the plant has one of these genotypes, then it makes only tan pigment and the seed coat appears tan. If the plant has one of these genotypes, then it makes only gray pigment and the seed coat appears gray. And if the plant is homozygous recessive for both genes A and B, then it makes no seed coat pigment and the green chlorophyll from the tissues underneath the seed coat shows through, making the seed appear green. So you can see that the interactions between the products of these two genes, gene A and gene B, layer to create the seed coat phenotype. The fact that we're dealing with multiple genes increases the number of phenotypes you see for this trait, four distinct lentil seed coat colors. There you have it. That's a polygenic trait, a trait determined by more than one gene. Polygenic traits differ from monogenic traits because monogenic traits are determined by a single gene, while polygenic traits can be determined by two, three, four, or more genes. As I said earlier, human height, eye color, skin color, and lentil seed coat color are polygenic traits, while diseases like sickle cell anemia and Huntington's disease are examples of monogenic traits. The example in this video was one where multiple genes associated with the trait have an additive effect leading to a phenotype. Other examples of polygenic traits come with epistasis and genetic redundancy. If you'd like to learn more, see my videos covering those topics.